Dienu godātie! Of the uh, price, we are starting the joint press conference of Secretary of State of Common for Commonwealth Affairs of the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, and the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Gersenkevich. I am very happy to see you, representatives of media, in the middle of August. We just uh, had a meeting uh, with uh, Mr. Jeremy Hunt, uh, the Foreign Minister of uh, Great Britain, and I am very happy to welcome him in this official visit in Latvia for several reasons. The one reason is uh, that, as you know, we are celebrating this year's centenary of our country. And the historical fact is that Great Britain not only helped us to fight for our independence, uh, but also recognized the um, independence of Latvia before it was proclaimed. Therefore, we have great relationship with Great Britain historically already. And also today, when we discussed our bilateral relationship, we really established a good political dialogue, uh, economic relationship, and uh, we were talking about the future. The second reason uh, we were discussing is of interest of everything, everybody, and that is Brexit, and what is going on uh, concerning negotiations. We are of one opinion uh, that we need agreement between the EU and Great Britain. Unfortunately, there are a lot of issues not solved yet, and I would be careful in evaluating whether this agreement will be concluded or not. I would say 50 to 50 are the chances. At the same time, we consider uh, that uh, issues concerning our people in Great Britain and uh, nationals of Great Britain in uh, the EU uh, trade uh, relationship, uh, the security and defense between um, Great Britain and uh, the EU are the ones where both parties, the EU and Great Britain, has to find a compromise. We are ready to work uh, on that together with other member states of the EU and following uh, the principle of uh, uniformity, at the same time trying to find the solutions. We also discussed our uh, cooperation in the field of strategic communication. Uh, we discussed uh, how to facilitate exchange of experience, uh, how to work with fight against propaganda in social networks. We also discussed the issue concerning cooperation between our electronic mass media Council or NEPR, PL, and uh, OFCOM, uh, the regulator of Britain. Uh, as you know, several uh, Russian channels are registered in the Great Britain, and we see uh, that this cooperation is going in the positive direction. Uh, however, there are several issues we still have to agree on. And of course, NATO security issues, regional security issues, situation in uh, Eastern partner countries and in Russia. And I would say that we are very happy with the results of NATO Brussels summit. And we consider that all countries of NATO have to make more efforts in uh, strengthening our security. We are thankful to Great Britain not only for its leading position in uh, NATO in Estonia, but also uh, for the fact that uh, Great Britain is one of the countries that together with uh, Denmark and Latvia will make a division uh, command point here to uh, improve the structure of common structure. And uh, we also agree that uh, NATO policy against Russia should follow the course it has taken right now. Uh, that means sanctions, and again I express our solidarity to Great Britain concerning incident in Salisbury. What happened in February this year is not only attack to Great Britain, but it is aggression in the territory of the EU and NATO member state. And we have to find a single answers 
to such reactions. I hope I haven't said anything and my colleague still has to say something. Thank you very much indeed, um, Edgar. It's a great pleasure and privilege uh, to be here in Riga this morning. I went for a run and I ran past the uh, Museum of Occupation between 1940 and 1990 and that reminded me that uh, there is no European country that understands the value of freedom more than Latvia. And uh, I think there's no European country that has done more to defend the borders of Europe than the United Kingdom. Um, and we are proud that we uh, recognized Latvian independence before Latvia actually declared independence itself. I'm not sure whether that was intentional or not, but uh, uh, we have always been proud to be a friend of Latvia and uh, to share the many historical struggles that you have had on the remarkable journey to freedom and prosperity uh, that we have seen you go on over the last 30 years. Um, and we believe that this is a time when we cannot be complacent about the threats on the international seen. Uh, there is a lot of opportunism from Russia. Um, we are extremely grateful for the solidarity that you showed us over the Salisbury incident. Uh, we cannot allow countries to use chemical weapons and get away with it. They must always know that the price is going to be too high if they take those measures. And uh, so I think uh, your support over that incident is uh, extremely welcome, but also extremely important, uh, because this was the use of a nerve agent on European soil, and it is essential that we respond uh, when things like that happen with uh, decisiveness and with unity. And in that context, the Brexit negotiations are also extremely important. Uh, of course, we are worried uh, that they might not go the right way and that we might not end up with a deal. But we're also encouraged that a growing number of countries, including Latvia, are keen for a uh, pragmatic outcome. And we understand that the EU 27 countries have to be united, uh, but we just want them to be united behind a position of pragmatism and partnership with the United Kingdom because we think that to do anything that threatened that partnership would be a huge geostrategic mistake uh, that would take generations to heal and we don't think that that would be in the interest of any European country, whether inside or outside the EU. So it's been a real pleasure uh, to come here, uh, to get to know Edgars um, and uh, to understand just how important it is uh, for countries like Latvia on the front line of the battle for freedom and democracy uh, to have strong partnerships with countries like the United Kingdom. And I just want to say that we value that friendship every bit as much as you do as well. Thank you, Mr. Hunt. Are there any questions? And if there are, please. possibility of reaching a Brexit deal is 50 to 50. Do you agree with those odds? Well, I don't like to put a, an exact percentage on it, but um, all I would say is that, uh, of course, there is this risk of a no deal, um, but I think there are a growing number of countries that recognize that that would be a very, very big mistake, not just for the United Kingdom, but for the EU as well. And so, um, Rather than speculating on the exact percentages, let's work hard to make sure that doesn't happen, um, that we make uh, the right geostrategic choices at this very important moment in European history. Yeah, Any other questions? From newspaper Latvia, sorry, uh, you are a former um, Secretary of Health. Uh, uh, so I want to ask, uh, 
about um, uh, do you know the when the Brexit happened, uh, will happen, um, do you know some data how many, uh, uh, how, how large impact it will be on the NHS system and the EU, EU, European Union nationals like Latvians, Lithuanians uh, working in that particular system? Thanks a lot. I told you our journalists are nice. Now you'll get the questions from your No, no, work. no, I'm, I'm very happy to answer that question. I mean. Uh, the NHS is very proud to have uh, more than uh, 20,000 nurses who are EU citizens and uh, more than 10,000 doctors. Uh, and uh, it would fall over without the incredibly important contribution made by citizens from other EU countries. And we want them to stay, and we've made it very clear that we want them to stay. And, uh, you know, we are very grateful for the huge contribution made by 100,000 Latvians living in the UK, uh, not just to the NHS, but to many aspects of our economy and society. And uh, that's why what we are seeking from these negotiations is a deep and special partnership, a relationship between uh, Britain and the EU that is similar to the relationship between Denmark and Sweden, between Germany and Switzerland, between Australia and New Zealand, we think it's entirely possible uh, to be not just your neighbor, but your best friend, even if our legal relationship is different. And uh, that includes uh, putting a very high value on the contribution to our economy and national life made by EU citizens. Yes, and I'll call you out. I'm, yeah, Reuters. Hello, I'm uh, Jadar Zeus from Reuters News Agency. I wanted to ask you uh, again about a no-deal Brexit situation. How concerned are you about a possible market reaction and fall of, uh, of uh, sterling if, in, in case there is a no-Brexit deal? Thank you. Well, of course there will be um, significant short-term impact. But I think in these situations uh, the British economy would find a way to get through it, and indeed we would find a way ultimately to thrive and be successful. Uh, what I'm much more worried about in that no deal situation is the geostrategic impact on the relationship between Britain and its friends in Europe. Um, I think it would risk, if we had a, a chaotic, messy divorce, um, I think it would uh, risk that friendship in a way that is in no one's interests, and that's why I think it's very important that we make a pragmatic, sensible decision and don't end up with a situation that everyone regrets. Yes, there are three. Still. Yes, hello, uh, Eva Butkevich from TV3 News. A uh, question for Mr. Hunt, uh, just to pile on the Brexit bandwagon right now. You stated that there is a concern that uh, the negotiations aren't going in the right way. What is the right way for these negotiations to go? to occur, because right now it seems a bit uh, uh, not clear where we're going to end up with this. Well, I think it's quite straightforward. Um, the Prime Minister has put forward a set of proposals that actually address all the concerns that uh, the EU has expressed, uh, that are, have a very clear vision for a future trading relationship between uh, Great Britain and the European Union that deal with the uh, Northern Irish border issue um, and that would mean that we could have a strong, deep, special partnership between the UK and the EU, not just on the economic sphere but also in the security and uh, defence and diplomatic sphere as well. So um, we've put a set of proposals on the table. Um, we'll understand that uh, the EU side will have lots of questions about those proposals, but what we want is uh, serious engagement with those proposals um, because we think they form the basis of uh, something that can not just respect the, the letter and spirit of the British referendum result, but also the, um, the spirit of uh, what the EU wants in terms of respecting the integrity of the single market and the four freedoms. Yes, and what is radio? 
Putin Slivia, it's Latvian Radio. Uh, I would like to ask the question about uh, the stability of British government and would the no, no Brexit deal mean the, the breaking down of government? Well, I think um, lots of people have uh, underestimated Theresa May's resilience and determination and I would encourage you uh, not to do that. Um, this is someone who is an extraordinarily strong, determined leader who wants to get the right deal for Great Britain, but has also made it clear that uh, she sees uh, the right relationship between Great Britain and the EU as a uh, close economic integration, as a deep partnership that goes across not just the economic sphere, but many other spheres as well. So um, I am very confident that uh, under her leadership, the British government will weather the storms ahead, but I don't want to pretend that it's not going to be a choppy and difficult period because uh, this is a very uh, big change in Britain's legal relationship with the EU, and the choice facing all of us is uh, what type of separation we have. Is it a separation that lays the foundation for a deep friendship that can continue over decades ahead? That's Theresa May's vision. Um, or is it a separation that leads to um, acrimony, anger, bitterness, um, which I think would be a very big mistake for all of us? Uh, my question is to Mr. Renkevich. Uh, you mentioned, of course, you mentioned uh, NEPBL. Uh, British colleagues, do they understand the activity of disinformation of Russian TV channels and how this cooperation is expressed in practice? Well, yes, I consider that our British colleagues and friends really do understand what uh, informative war means and what necessity to cooperate with different institutions mean in order to fight against this propaganda because it's not freedom of mass media but it's propaganda and it should be restricted. We have had already discussions with officials of Great Britain on different levels we have discussed a basic issue with the ex-Foreign uh, Minister, Mr. Johnson, also our um, Culture Minister, that's a Lombard, when she visited uh, Great Britain, met with the respective officials, and we see good progression in this field. Of course, you have to take into consideration that every country has its legislation, and uh, application of legislation is not only in the competence of a uh, regulator, but also in the competence of other institutions. But our uh, dialogue for the last couple of years, as well uh, uh, with Great Britain, as well uh, with Sweden, because in Sweden there are also several TV channels of Russia registered, uh, we really see that uh, uh, we are going in the right way and we see that uh, apart from bilateral cooperation we have to work more actively and we have to uh, have